Well, hello, and welcome to Majesty Sussex Report. I'm Antonio, and it's an absolute pleasure and honor to have you join us today. I really hope that you will enjoy today's podcast um, because we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Now, let me explain to you why. So I started to record um, Endgame at Chapter 5 um, to give the summary and then a comment and then um, whatever else I usually would add on to to that episode. And I had I had thought that I should actually maybe at the beginning of the podcast, like what I'm doing right now, um, just highlight two or three comments and uh, respond to to them and make it sort of a regular thing, right? So I started out, everything was going fine. And 20 minutes later, I realized I was still responding to the comment. And I thought, oh my goodness, like 20 minutes responding to a comment. Like, what is wrong with me? So I stopped and and just thought, hang on a minute. I've been thinking about how might I kind of recognize these wonderful comments and also the ones that I think I would love to respond to and um, have that kind of conversation. And I thought, why don't I make it like maybe once a week or something? I just dedicate an entire podcast to just looking at comments and picking a few, responding to it, and turn that into a once a week thing, right? So, and I, I here, here is the funny part. Well, I think it's funny. Um, I was like, so what should I call it? And I, I came up with a name, um, Royal Off The Rails. So Royal Sussex Off The Rails. And then I thought, mm, no, maybe I'll do um, Majesty. Majesty um, Going Low. No, I didn't like that either. So I don't have a name for it. Um, so a name will be discovered. Probably you you know what a name is because I am recording this. And after I record um, the audio, that's when I start to do the graphics and stuff and start to build what you see as, as the podcast. So um, right now I don't have a name, but by the time I finish this, I might have a name for it for this segment. Um, so you can expect it once a week. Okay. All right, so let's get it on. Well, it was Piers Morgan doing what Piers Morgan does. Uh, and I, I think you've actually put your finger right on it, Tom, when you say the difference between the bits that were cleared by lawyers and the bits were, that weren't. Uh, he very carefully said he's never hacked a phone or told anyone to hack a phone. That is not what the judge was suggesting he did. and. Uh, just, I mean, yeah, there is one sentence in that judgment where he says there is compelling evidence that the editors of each newspaper knew very well that phone hacking was being used extensively and habitually and were happy to take the benefits of it. And uh, I'm pretty sure the judge would stand by that conclusion on the basis of the evidence he heard in court. Can I just make one more point about it, Tom? Um, he talked specifically about, about Scobie and about Campbell. Mm -hmm calling them liars. I don't want to get into the name calling. The, the, the point about this court case is that it didn't hang on their evidence. It hung on evidence from journalists who were there at the time, who have turned whistleblower, who have had an awful lot of stuff thrown at them by the newspapers that they were blowing the whistle on and in the witness box by the Mirror Group lawyers. And I was there and I saw some of it and it was pretty brutal stuff. They withstood that, they were telling the truth, and they were found by the judge to be entirely credible witnesses. And those are the witnesses that I think we should pay most attention to, and I think the uh, the judge was clearly pay paying attention to. And uh, it's not just, I'm afraid, in Mirror Group, we've got the other. Okay, so the first comment, um, which is not really a comment, but that I want to acknowledge, is I got my first super sticker. It says super thank you or super thanks uh, from Robin492. Robin, I 
and I'm so sorry because I did not even know you've actually sent it um, a little while ago. I, I think uh, like a week ago, and I didn't check my um, Majesty Sussex uh, email, um, and I don't check it very often. I check it maybe once a week. Actually, I don't check it every day. I check it once a week, and I was going through the emails. And I saw this this thing that said, this email from YouTube that said, um, make sure you remember to say thank you to one of your supporters. And I went, what? What, what does that mean? And then I looked into it and it was a super sticker from you, Robin, 492. Thank you so very much. I absolutely appreciate the conversation you and I had. I think it was an enlightened conversation and a respectful one. And I am a person who, as I said before, I love to have conversations. And uh, I will sit down with almost anyone and, and, and try and have a civil conversation or listen to their thoughts or, and ask them like, how, how, why did you think this way? Or how come you ended up this? And have, as long as both people are willing to be open and um, willing to, uh, I would say, open to what is logic, right? Like what makes sense? Like I've had discussion with people that just say things that I'm like, okay, I, I'm showing you the evidence that what you think is not what is truth. And you're still telling me that I'm wrong and you're right. Okay, I'm ending this conversation because it's no longer a conversation. But anyways, Robin, I, I think one of the things that I really appreciate is that we are both people of fate. And I think, and I'm not talking about religion, I, I, I think fate in general, um, when we look at, even if you were to take um, what the different preachings or the different thoughts or the, um, that religion sort of practices, and it, 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 they, they, they all have this very similar philosophy, right? Deep down, it's a very similar philosophy. And that is, you know, to, to do good and 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 to to take care of yourself and take care of others that we are our brothers and sisters keepers and you know i think why i say it's not religion because um humankind we we have corrupted enormously um fate and we've corrupted it with with insidiousness and 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 evil and hatred and doing things that are not in line with what having that ultimate fate is all about i think actually some of the people that have practiced that connectivity with um with our world earth and 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 their surroundings as being indigenous people and their their faith in nature and and that which is to be protected is absolutely beautiful and the way they actually you know the traditions and stuff that um, indigenous people have are, are just amazing so i think that our faith allowed us space and grace to each other and i really appreciate the conversation we had and thank you for being so graceful and thank you for the super sticker thank you this is absolutely great i actually took a screenshot of it and i have it on my digital um picture frame in my living room so thank you it's the very first one that i received so i thought i should um do something about it frame it and keep it and look at it and go ah there's another milestone that's great Okay, so I'm looking at comments from um, the episode um, Prince Harry, the Dragon Slayer. And um, I'll just go quickly here. So, Rosalind um, uh, 
Bocaccione, um, to say thank you, Antonio. It's my pleasure. Thank you for being here and um, for leaving a comment. And Marcia Delvi. Marcia, I'm going to read your comment, not the entire thing, but very quick, quickly. Um, when I say quickly, I mean at my own pace. <laughs> Uh, catching up on another brilliant presentation, Antonio. Seems like many people of a certain genetic makeup are unable to empathize with people who don't look like them. Seems like their inability to recognize people out of their race as being humans is, is the root of the problem. Someone of Harry's race said that marrying a woman of color, even if it's a uh, drop is the fuel behind the campaign of hatred as well as as well and that harry would never be forgiven by some of them for his choices right and you know marcia it's it's such racist is is is, is a complex issue and very sensitive one even though for a lot of us it is not, like it really isn't. And what I think it boils down to is that our society has been constructed for and by a particular race, right? Because I had this discussion with um, a friend of mine not too long ago. And we were talking about history and all of that. And he said to me, I mean, this, he's, he's, he's a great guy. He said to me, because, you know, the thing that bothers me about this whole race thing and racism and, and slavery and all of that, he goes, you know, if you look at history, everyone was enslaved at one point or another. Right? He goes, you look at, 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 at you know, like the Roman Empire and, and 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 all these other empires, like they would go to war and then they would um, capture people and enslave them and even and and it is true, right? And and the Roman um, Roman Empire had very everyone had specific roles and 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 um, if 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 you were a slave uh, captured in a battle. You wore this, but then there was there were slaves that could actually purchase their their freedom. Then there were slaves that had some freedoms because they worked in the household, or they were lovers of 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 the um, of the um, head 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 of the household. So yes, there's been slavery um, to all people throughout our our history um but our contemporary history the ones that's closest to us is the one that we we exist in today right and for me it is that the people who say and I've come to the realization about this people who are um that the system is built for, that gives advantages to, when they say they don't know that, or they're like, no, we're all equal. No, 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 no. I don't have any advantages. You know, I'm treated exactly the same way like anyone else is treated. They're lying. And they know they're lying. They, they know they're lying. Right? Because before I used to give people the benefit of the doubt. I used to think, no. But I've I've lived long enough thus far, knock on wood, and experienced a couple of things in my life that have taught me, no, they actually know this. If we look at the example of, if you remember a few years ago, the um, woman in Central Park with her dog and she had the dog off a, off of a leash and uh, there's this you know black young man who was bird watching of all things and in that area of uh, 
since Central Park, you're supposed to have your dog on a leash. So he, he, he very, very kindly um, said, excuse me, you know, um, this is an area where you need to put your dog on a leash. It, it's, it's, it's sort of where we bird watch and all of that. And the indignation on her. And thank goodness he was recording. And we see continuously people who will go up to a car and say, hey, you're in my parking spot. And and a person's like, oh, well, this is visitor's parking, I was told. Yeah, but I usually park there, so get out, move. Right? So, and, 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 you know, looking at some young kid, some young black kid, minority, um, opening up a little lemonade stand or something. Um, maybe she doesn't live in that neighborhood. Maybe he doesn't live in that neighborhood, but their their aunt or uncle um, lives in that neighborhood. And they just thought, okay, well, you're with us for the weekend and the, 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 the um, kid wants to do something entrepreneurial. And you have people, you have grown adults. I, I tell you, this, this thing... That they on on sort of like when um, the, that former president was elected and the things that he said, it gave others uh, permission to just openly be themselves and be as racist as they as they can be, like what they actually held in their heart, right? So I think it's. That system is not going to ever, ever go away until the people who, who benefit from it decide that it's time. Because I'll tell you, right now I think we're in a, in, in a very interesting transition in the world. I think there's so much happening and many things are being revealed to us. Um, Assumptions that we had before are being erased. People who we who we thought were um, uh, good end up being that they're not. And uh, governments that we thought were pro-democracy end up that they're not. Um, when we have uh, different children having different values. And when I say value, I mean in regards to, well, we are going to protect the children from this country because, you know, they deserve protecting. But the children over in that other country, nah, they, they, they can be killed. It's okay. So there is a lot happening in the world. And I do think there is, there is a great battle happening. And that's the battle between, and do forgive me for this, but, but, but I, I, I feel it strongly. I think there is a battle of good and evil. And I think that there is an awakening that so many of us need to go through. Some of us that are people that are just, we are good people, right? We follow the rules, we follow the norms, we do, we do what we think is the right thing, um, but we don't question too much, right? And I think there's a generation now that is questioning a lot of things and going, well, why do we do that? What for? Who does it benefit? And Things are coming unraveled. So I agree with you, Marcia. Um, they are people, right, of a certain genetic uh, makeup that, that you know, they, they, they know they have the, the privileges and they know society is built for them. So when someone says to me, you know, well, it's the same thing. You study hard or you work hard and you will succeed. No, 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 my friend. I'm starting not at the same start point as you are. And people will say, oh, well, I'm white and I'm poor. And I didn't get any privileges. I can barely afford my, my, my um, grocery bills. Yeah, but if you're white... You see, you were born already with a, an advantage. So you will probably never know go, walking into a jewelry store or any kind of 
I don't know. Um, not if I shouldn't even say exclusive, but any other place and and the the assumption of you being a criminal does not follow you, right? The assumption or the stereotype does not follow you. So I'm not saying that you're born with extreme privileges. I'm saying the matter of fact of being a person who is white, the world opened certain doors for you that people who are not have to actually fight to get those doors open. Right, the mere fact of, I've given the example before, me applying for a summer job, right? And on the, on the, on the, on the, on the company or the sales store, it said, you know, um, salesperson wanted, apply inside. And I went inside and I was told, oh, we need to take that sign down. We already have um, all the positions um, uh, filled out. So thank you so much. Thank you. And, you know, I was like, okay, no problem. Thank you. Left. And that's the way sort of this racism happens in places like Canada and in the UK. It's very overt kind of thing. It's not in your face. And that same, I say, I was going to say the same day, but that same, I don't know, 10 minutes, within that 10 minutes or 15 minutes. And... It was myself and a group of friends that we were just in this particular area handing out applications or, or our CV um, for summer jobs. And my friend, one of my friends, she, she, she's, she, when we met up again, she said, oh, did everyone apply to this store over here? And um, a few of my other friends, they said, yeah, 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 we had in our stuff. And I said, what? I said, I, I, I went in and they told me the positions were were all taken. And I started to ask, like, what time did you go in? Like, was it a while ago or just recently? Because I'm still trying to give the store owner <laughs> or whoever um, the benefit of the doubt. And um, my friends, they went in at different times. But my the one, um, he said, he's like, I, I was there five minutes ago. And I was like, oh, damn, right? So, look, it, 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 it just happens. And, and we know that um, people who have that privilege, that society, our modern-day society has actually been, been built for them, right? And the rest of us have to actually um, work a little bit harder um, if, uh, for it. Okay. Moving on to the next one. The next comment, um, you see, I took like, what, half an hour to respond to that? Um, the next one is from Joan Garcia. Joan Garcia, hello, Joan. And um, I will say, actually, even though um, uh, I talked about the first super sticker, Joan is actually the first person who messaged me and said, the minute you were able to do, like, memberships, or anything like that, please do tell me. I would I would love to support your channel. And I hope, Joan, um, you don't mind me say, saying this um, or saying what, what I just said. And um, thank you so very much, um, Joan. So Joan writes, Hi, Antonio. I just caught um, your replay. It's aesthetically beautiful and informative. Frankly, Charles, Charles, his family, media, government, etc. keep showing us who they are. They're petty, cruel, mean-spirited, hateful, racist, etc. against Harry and Meghan. Yet, they don't seem to want to change. I trust Harry um, when in his ongoing fight for truth and decency. And then um, concludes by saying, oh, by the way, did you know Baron mentioned you in a recent podcast? Thanks and take care. Uh, first of all, thank you for the wonderful, wonderful comments. I, um, this is, this is, this is such a passion, right? I've wanted to 
do this for a while. And I have so much respect for you folks that when I am not happy with um, the outcome of a product or the delivery or something, I just delete the entire thing and start over again. And I'll be honest. Like I go back and I listen to some of the very first ones and I was like, wow, it shows. And, and it's kind of neat though, because I can, I actually realize that there, there, there is growth and there is, there's, there's, there's a difference between um, the beginning and I can see, you know, um, improving uh, on the way. And that, that's all I think I can ask for to keep improving and for, all of you to keep enjoying and coming back and um, appreciating the work that goes into on this. Listen, I, Joan, I, I, I don't understand um, relationships with parents that don't love their children. And I, I'm not saying King Charles doesn't love Harry. I'm saying he is so self-centered. It's as if instead of Prince Harry being his son, is as if Prince Harry is his sworn enemy and a competitor. And there's a name for it, and I, I don't remember what it is right now, but I, I'm sure I studied this in psychology, but... They are parents that look at their children not as their child, but they look at them as you, my competitor. So if the child does better, if the child is trying to improve themselves, they will do everything to crush it. Because how dare you? How dare you try to be better than me? How dare you? Who are you? You didn't have to go through the things I went through. I made this path better for you, so you should appreciate it and don't try and outshine me. Right? And I, 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 again, I'm not saying that is what he feels or how he, you know, reacts to Harry, but I've been just every step of the, every step of the way more and more surprised because I think the situation is so easily resolved all it takes is courage leadership right a sense of right and wrong and he can conjure up understanding that and that really shocks me it really does because listen i I love my parents. I love my dad. I love my mom. They, I, I, I said to them a little while ago, because as I get older, I think I've become more expressive in telling people the way I feel. And I think also because I've, I've come to the realization of how fragile life is and how quickly it can be taken away from from you uh i said to my parents we were in colombia and um my dad was fretting over something and i said to him i said dad come on you know por favor yeah 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 por qué te, por qué te estás molestando por esto? you know like why are you getting so worked up or being bothered this little silly thing and I said to I said to um, him, I said, listen, I don't know how much time I've got left. I don't know how much time you've got left, how much time mom has got left. I don't know how much time any of us do. When we have these opportunities and occasions where we are together, right, can we do everything so the experience, the memory of it is one where we can remember fondly with love, and these little things, like what you're fretting over right now, ultimately, does it matter? You know, and he just looked at me, he's like, ah, yeah, I know, it doesn't matter, it's just that it bothers me. I said, yeah, but that, you know, me, papa. It's, it's, I, I can understand 
that it may bother you. So then maybe we need to ask the question, why does it bother you? Right? Because honestly, it doesn't have anything to do with you. Right? So we've had that kind of conversation. I've also... Oh, man. Um, I've also thanked God. Um, I'm so silly. Um, thank God that he gave me them as parents because I I don't I wouldn't be alive today. You know, if I had I think any other parent. They, you know, had a very sickly child that um was sick all the time, was in the emergency and in the hospital often. Um and was told that I wouldn't survive beyond the age of eight. And they did everything, everything. They spent money, they 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 flew in specialists from, from, from Miami. They 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 did everything to try and figure out like what was going on um with me and and really did everything to make sure I was okay. And I think because of them, I'm, I'm here today. Because they did all of that. Because they, they didn't give up. So I have enormous respect, enormous love for my parents. I mean, there are times, look, when you're a teenager, um, there, the, even if you love your parents enormously, there's going to be times where you're like, Arr! like, you know, like when I needed to ask to borrow the car. <laughs> Dad, can I borrow your car? No. Why not? Because, no. Why not, Dad? May I borrow your car, por favor? Papi, por favor, mira, papá. Por favor. <laughs> my mom, take my car. <laughs> I'm like, Mom, I don't want to drive your car. <laughs> I want to drive that. Uh, but anyways, I, 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 don't, I don't. I don't. I don't get it. Um, you know, Joan. And it is mind-boggling to me that after all that has happened he can't see how great his son is and what his son is actually doing it's taking so much courage he has he because of him you know the next generation of royals and and you know william and kate's children and 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 his children might be able to not have to go through the same nonsense and um he's got he's got a backbone man and i think perhaps maybe because he does it shows how much king charles doesn't it really does it shows how much he doesn't because if that was my kid I'd be like, okay, so you think we should we should do this? We should we should take them on. And I would say, listen, I've got some skeleton in 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 some armoire and in the in the closet and everywhere, and it's not going to be pretty. And they might write some stuff or say some stuff or disclose some stuff that you know you may not like, and it make you think of me differently, but. You know, I'll, I, I'm willing to. Let's do this. You know, it's your child. It's your child. So, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so next is uh, Dorothy uh, Cordice. Or Cordice. Um, these people always talk about how much the royal family spent on the wedding. And they always... <laughs> Uh, and I, 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 I know, I know Dorothy. They, they, they tend to forget, uh, very conveniently, that the wedding actually, the British government was quite happy to pay for it, um, because it brought in billions. It's the highest watch royal wedding to this date. I think it was one point nine billion people watched it and um, brought in billions of pounds to the economy 
um, to the British economy. So what they paid, right? And let's say they paid 20, 20 million. They got that back, not twice, not, not, not two times, three times, four times. They get it back 10 times, even more, right? So I think for people, they tend to stick to the argument that will support their belief, right? And I have always found that a little bit troubling. Anyone who can take away someone's humanity uh, and use the excuse of, well, they're this and they're that. And I heard, oh, you heard. So you don't even know them. You've never sat at a table and break bread with them. You know nothing about them. All you know is what has been said to you by a third, fourth person who has, right? Who has an intention why they're saying the things that they're saying. There's no truth. There's no validity really to it. There's no proof. And it, 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 is, it is easy, I think, because it's a lazy people. And I truly believe this. Lazy people like, la like easy answers to complicated issues. Hmm? So, and some of you are going to get angry at me here, but I'm going to say it. When I go to church, whether it's one denomination or another, because I grew up in a Catholic church, then my parents um, became Protestant, um, for a while, then they kind of went back to the Catholic Church, and now they they're just like they're like yeah I don't know if we need a church, <laughs> um, uh, even though they still go to church ever so often, and I always would listen to the sermon and listen to what the preacher was saying, and there are times where I would I would sit there, and I would think. How does that make sense? Right? Like the whole thing about, you know, people who are rich and wealthy, you know, they can't buy their way into heaven. And, you know, you need to be good and meek and obedient and all of that. And God will reward you. I was like, really? Is that what God wants? And then... As I, as, as, as I started to learn that the whole thing about this meek, obedient, um, actually was invented but in conjunction with religious leaders, and this is way back when, um, because they needed to find, right, the, 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 the landowners, uh, um, they needed to find a reason to give the workers to have hope because they would work those people, right? Like they would get like very minimal food and work them. The other thing they used to do, which, you know, I've learned, they used to give them like, um, uh, there is a type of drug that it's white and um, people will put it up their nose and it's supposed to make you hyper or, or super hunter stuff, stuff like that. So when that was discovered, right? And you can see it actually in Brit in Bridgerton when the queen does her little sniffy thing. I don't know if that's exactly what she's sniffing, but it's a, it's a, it's a byproduct or something of, of, of that particular substance. So they would give them that. So workers um, would go days without eating and just work, 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 work. And the landowners, in order to continue, when they saw there's like a little bit of a problem happening here, because people started to think, well, I work all of this time and you, you know... <laughs> 
you 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 reap in the fruits of my of, of my labor. I, I I I live on your land, but then you charge me for the water I drink. You charge me for the little piece of land that has this little hut that I sleep in with 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 forty other people, and so you know what is the benefit here for me? And I seem to be in eternal serv servitude to you. So they came up with this brilliant idea um, in the religious, with the re religious leaders and and the upper class. Because remember, a lot of religious, um, not speaking for the Catholic Church, but a lot of them, you know, the Pope and 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 um, the 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 higher ups um, had very. They came from very wealthy families. And they had very close relationship with very wealthy families. So um, what they came up with was this whole idea that you will inherit the kingdom of God. You, because you're so good, you're a hard worker, you are obedient, you follow the rules, you do things as it should be, right? So what it did, it was, it, it, it took away that question from the worker, that question from them saying, hang on a second, how am I benefiting again from this? So it created an answer and the answer was, oh, you, you, you're you, not gonna benefit in this life, but hey, once you die, there is this place that you're gonna get everything you want, right? So they used, um, religion in order to uh get that done uh, uh so it's 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 fascinating i think sometimes i remember when um as a university and when there's new things i was learning and not only learning but but understanding where it came from and how we ended up um the way and the uh, uh, and 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 they believe in the things that we believe in where we are presently. I was like, oh, so that is where that. I'm like, okay, well now I get it, right? Because there there's so much that um, you know in that time, and 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 still today, that exists. I, I I say, I'm a person of fate. But I've always, even as a kid, as a child, always questioned what w was being preached. Always did. When things didn't make sense to me, right? Like when you're in church and you hear sister so-and-so talking about brother so-and-so and sister so-and-so, and I'm like, well, that's not very nice. I was like, are you here to just gossip or are you here to like... Right? It was just very that kind of thing. Or, oh, she's wearing the same dress like as last week. I heard they're going through some financial problems. So instead of you helping, you're you're gossiping. That is not very you know. Uh, so it it's always when when I've when I've looked at someone standing at a pulpit and, and preaching things and saying, I, um, God has spoken to me and I deserve to fly in a new, uh, in a new jet and I need a hundred million dollars to get this new jet because God said I deserve it. And people, people, people send the money. And I'm like, no, that's not Jesus' teachings. Jesus walked into a church, a temple, where they had turned that temple into, into, it, 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 into sort of like a market, an exchange in this, and 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 and, and, and he threw them out. He said, "Not here. This is not a place for that." And I think we have to be so careful. We have so many. I don't want to say false prophets because that that's just a heavy word to use. I think, but. Sometimes I, I, I listen to these 
people preach and you know I keep thinking why do so many of us turn off what God gave us like God made us God made us in, in all of our brilliance in all of our defectiveness in all of our um, incompleteness and completeness God made us so there's nothing wrong with who we are, period. With who you are, there's nothing wrong. So when other people start to cast judgment or they start to say, oh, well, the Bible says this. Oh, does it? Or is that your interpretation of it? Because we have to remember, the Bible has been used many times to justify cruelty. Right to justify wars. And the Bible we read today is not the Bible that was original because it's been translated so many times. Words have been changed. King James Version, their, their entire thing, stories that were changed because King James didn't like this section or he didn't want this over there and, and they just changed it, right? So when I see people of faith, people who welcome everyone, people who believe in doing good, people who serve the poor, people who don't turn away um, a loved one. Um, that to me is greatness and, and faith. And I don't know how I ended up talking about that. You see, folks, you see what happens? I go from one thing and I end up somewhere completely different. And I've only actually touched like three comments. Oh, I am, I am something, eh? Let me tell you. And I think it, it again, it has to do with, <laughs> with not speaking a lot when I was a kid or when I was, um, because it's made fun so much. Uh, the way I spoke or um, my speech in impediment and all of that. So I didn't speak a lot. I, I was very quiet. I was a very quiet child. I still am sort of quiet, but um, I think I speak more now. <laughs> so, and I, I have all this stuff in my head that, you know, comes out one way or another. Um, and Dorothy also said, thank you for showing I'm showing that I also log on to um, his podcast. Oh, 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 this, this, this reminds me of uh, um, Baron. So thank you so much, Joan. Um, yes, Bar Baron is just like, he is, I don't want to say the Godfather because like, I don't know how he will take that, but he is, he is, he, he's it, right? Um, finding or trying to search for voices in these spaces that kind of were questioning and believed the same things I was believing or going, hang on a minute, something is not right here. When I found Royal Sussex, I, and I've said this before, I was like, I'm home. I am home. And Baron has a God-given talent. Um, I mean, if, if, if it was his destiny before um, to be a talk show host or, or any of that, like, like, and, and for one reason or another, he didn't become that then, but he is, he's, he, 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 he's found the medium to do what he does today. You know, everything is divine in its own timing and so on. He is fantastic. He carries that podcast for one, two, three hours. And you are never, ever bored. He always, his, 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 his brilliance and, and knowledge and the way he connects things and, um, you always end up learning something. And 
when it's getting way too serious, way too heavy, he will just turn it on you. And next thing you know, you're laughing. You're absolutely laughing. And you look at, hang on a second, was I, was I about to like get really emotional over something we were just talking about? And he he has this this very um very authentic sense of 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 how he approaches his material and it's just really wonderful like i cannot say um more things about about him and i do recommend you um if you i don't know found my channel by any chance and you didn't find um barons yet um please please do yourself a favor and go subscribe to royal sussex um he is absolutely amazing and uh, and uh, and uh, and the uh, um and the singing and and uh, and the 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 you know double entendres and everything else it's just really good he's really 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 good there's some extraordinary people in in this space and they do an ex extraordinary job and um he is second to no one he's at the top i think and um my my virtual hat comes off to him and Baron, thank you so much for everything you have done to help this channel grow. Um, I appreciate it enormously. And when I've asked a question here or there, you have very kindly responded back to me. And I really appreciate that. Um, now we have uh, Elizabeth or Elizabeth. Um, and I say Elizabeth because my, my mom that's my mom's name. My mom was named after the Queen. Um, so yes, there's royal connections in my family <laughs> in regards to that. So, and in Spanish we say Elizabeth. In English it's Elizabeth. So we call her both ever so often. Um, when I do want to kind of like piss her off a little bit though, but not like really badly piss her off. I'll be like Elizabeth. And she's like, she looks at me, she's like, Elisabeth, huh? Elisabeth. I'm like, it's Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love my mom so much. Um, so you say, excellent podcast, thanks. Uh, Harry had guts and capacity to fight back, refused to be bullied or intimidated by the tabloids. The victory is not about money, but a fight for many victims against tabloid abuse. Bravo for Prince Harry and his legal team. You know, Elizabeth, oh, Elizabeth, I, I wonder why the British public don't see that. And evidence is that the newspapers and the tabloid especially, like the following day it was nowhere to be seen. Nowhere, such such a such a such a big, big news that that is in the interest of everyone, and no, they didn't publish it. The one thing I'll say give give me some some comfort was that a lot of the TV programming and news shows did dedicate time to it, um, but some of them should have not dedicated any time at all because they spent more time finding excuses for the tabloid like one show one show someone said um you know and actually you know it was a reporter the reporter said you know i i i mean i i don't see why he has to do all of this it just you know, the mirror did apologize to him. This is stuff that happened in the past. We've all moved on from it. And um, you know, is what why 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 is he just not wanting to move on and, 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 and keep this and do this? And I just kept thinking So this is what you call journalism? You are defending a practice that is illegal not only illegal 
but was used to destroy people's lives. And you're on TV as a reporter who should be impartial, making excuses for the tabloid press. And he went on to say, I am sure, you know, because, you know, yes, we can recognize that he was hacked, that the mirror was very diligent in making sure probably they only listened to like one or two of his calls. That he he was so sure that they did not abuse that power, that they likely only listened to like a little teensy bitsy little bit here and a little insy bitsy little bit over there. And I'm watching this fool and I'm thinking, what under God's blessed skies you are talking about? And is that same, or there's a plane um, above that is flying to the airport that's not too far away from where I live. Um, there's a small airport um, close by. And uh, one of my friends, uh, when he was starting to become a pilot, he's like, hey, want to go flying? And I was like, were you? No. <laughs> I was like, I went to high school with you, man. I, <laughs> I know you're dumb as dumb. Uh, but, <laughs> but no, I actually did. I, I did. I did go. Uh, we, 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 we're great friends. He's a, he's a great pilot. And um, it was so great to take off from that airport and, and uh, fly around the city downtown and, um, you know, see that, that view. It was just fantastic. Anyways, I, 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 I wonder so many times about what the public gets to know. Like I said in a podcast prior, who gets to tell your story and what story is being um, selected for you to know and which ones are being omitted. And there are times where I'm like, I just want to shake the British public, wake up. And there's other times I feel enormous amount of empathy and it's just not just for the British public. It's for all of us. Because I'll tell you, this, this, past, this past year has been horrible. It's been horrible realizing that certain news outlets, <clears throat> excuse me, that I've trusted are complicit in, 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 in telling us stories that are not factual and truth and watching how they they also cover um harry and megan especially when that new york um incident happened i was like excuse me and the snicker and the sort of like yeah and they said they were chased for two hours downtown manhattan can you believe that deborah <laughs> back to the studios and i was like that's not funny why are you turning this into like a, a comedy act? It's not funny. So, you know, it's, it's, it's incredible the power that, that media has. And um, we do need to become more and more media savvy get our information from more than one source. I want to say more than one source, like different types of medium. And also let your eyes tell you what's what you're seeing and believe it. You know, believe it. If you see an apple, say that's an apple, no matter how much they're telling you it's an orange. Be like, no, it's an apple. I can see it, it's an apple. So you can keep saying orange, but I know it's an apple, right? So, anyways, um, I think this might be one of the last ones. Actually, I'll just go really quickly. I'm not going to respond. I'll just um, say, so thank you, Lydia Washington, uh, for that wonderful compliment. Um, Suzy Q, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Victoria Fabre um, of Victoria, or Victoria, thank you very much. And, um, yes. You know, I honor my mother in everything I do. I am my mother's son, quote Prince Harry, you know. 
I mean, that's just delicious, man. And um, Sugar Plum, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Um, I think that is Lily, Lilith, Lilith Delphine or Delphines. Thank you. And yes, praise to the Lord. Uh, Royal Sussex Baron left me a message. Um, thank you so much, Baron. And happy holidays to you too. And I am going to be um, spending time over there at Royal Sussex because, you know, that, that, that New Year's Eve party that you folks have had, I've been attending it silently. But it goes on and on and I love it. I love it. It's so much fun. Um, and... And Francisco, thank you very much. And um, my Jalis, uh, my Jalisa, my Jalisa, thank you. Uh, Matilda, thanks. Joanne Baker, thank you very much. Um, Reba H um, Henderson, I appreciate you and thank you. Um, Audrey, thank you very much. Um, or da da Dari, Dare? Dare da because Audrey is not the with a D. This is a D. This is D A U. Darane Darane Darane. Please forgive me for, for butchering um your um handle. And um Sharon, that's thank you very much. Um Ruth Ruth C two four six eight, thank you. So I'll end it there. Um on today's podcast on comments and feedback, which I don't think I have a name for it yet. So if you folks think I should name it and give it a name, put it in the comment section and um, it will be great. Thank you very, very much. This has been fun. I, I enjoyed this actually. This was very fun. Thanks. <laughs> What I know now, I would do it all again in a heartbeat Take those fragile years, all your worry and tears and put them on me Oh, I must admit, when I think of how far we've come It was worth the risk, cause it dug us a deeper love Never in a million years did I think I'd get so lucky? Never in a million years Did I think you'd be mine? And now I can't imagine a life without you And every song that I write about you Just thought you should know I'll never let you go Come to be found in this moment Makes it easy to believe Must be more to you and me Something magic And I must admit that every morning I wake up Either I must be dreaming Or I must be lost in love Never in a million years I get so lucky Never in a million years Did I think it'd be mine and Now I can't imagine a life without you And every song that I write about you Just thought you should know Oh, life could be 
soul.